Hello, my name is Sarah and I am your chakra coach. On this podcast, we'll be exploring how the chakra system can help guide you to grow your emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual wellness, leading you closer to your highest self. Hello, y'all, and welcome back to the show. I am just delighted that you are here. I hope this episode that you're about to listen to isn't really weird because it's it's not at all what I planned to put out this week, but I have had so many conversations, some with other people, some with myself, and I just, I felt like I needed to sort through my thoughts and feelings around this topic. And you're so lucky you get to listen. No, seriously though, seriously, after the self-sabotage episode a few weeks ago, it was number 168, if you want to go listen to it. In that episode, we talked about how self-sabotage has three chakric locations, the solar plexus, the heart, and the third eye. Um, but after all these these talks that I've had, these conversations that I've had, and a lot of self-reflection, I want to revisit the third eye chakra version of self-sabotage and expand on it. This is not part of the Maya Mala, which is generally considered comparison, although I, I definitely... I think it's sort of adjacent. It's related. So I'm, let me back up. Let me back up for a second. When we talk about self-sabotage, we're talking about things that we do that actively undermine the things we say we want to be and do. In the tradition that I learned, one way this shows up is comparison with others. And it's a third eye chakra imbalance called Maya Mala. But when I started to have conversations with listeners and clients about their acts of self-sabotage and getting to the root of why they were doing them, another form of third eye chakra imbalance started to show up. And not just in one person, but in a couple people. And I recognize it in myself, too. And now, and now I have a ton of work to do, so thanks for that. Just kidding. Just kidding. I actually am thankful. Regular listeners of this show and some students of the chakras will recognize the right to see as being contained in the third eye chakra. We think of that as the right to see the truth, the right to see your path or your way in the world without undue influence from others. But one thing it contains that I'm pretty sure I've never talked about on the show is sort of the, the flip side of that, and that's the right to be seen the right to be seen. And I feel like that encompasses so much. We could think of the right to be physically seen by others, not ignored when we walk into a room, not to disappear into the background. And you might be saying that sometimes you want to be invisible. Okay, great. As long as you're making that choice and you've got your reasons for that all figured out and you're comfortable with them. But what about those times when you haven't made that choice and you still feel invisible? That's, that's a violation of your third eye chakra fundamental right to be seen. And then it got tricky for me because culturally, we definitely have groups of people who are more visible than others, considered more important because of the way they look, their race, gender, class, occupation, all the ways that we sort others out in our minds. And balancing our own third eye chakra won't help with that if you're part of the group that's less visible because it isn't your imbalances that are causing that. (laughs) But it's not like we can go around saying to people, oh, it looks like your third eye chakra is imbalanced. You're not seeing me properly. Let me help you with that. And and I I don't know how to do a complete overhaul of the culture. I mean, promoting awareness is a start and speaking to the problems instead of ignoring them. And, and I guess kind of what I'm, I'm landing on is, is being sure that I'm not violating anyone else's right to be seen. That's, that's work I can do daily on myself to really see people, everyone, which is something I think I try to do, but like so many things, if you're not actively doing it and working on it, it gets forgotten a lot. Another way that we're not seen emotionally. 
really letting people know us, the real us, not the beautifully curated versions of ourselves. And as always, let me be clear about this. Not everyone needs to know everything about you. It's not their business. And honestly, not everyone is a safe place for us to be vulnerable. But I think that a lot of us, I mean, I know I do, we, we overcorrect and we don't let anyone see us. And then we feel like we don't have any genuine connections. And that's one of the greatest desires most humans have is to have true connections with partners, with friends. But being seen can be scary. I'm sure you felt at some point like you had to be the one who had it all together, who could who could take on one more thing because I'm fine, I'm fine, nothing's wrong. Like you had to be the strong one because no one else would or no one else could do it as well as you. Showing vulnerability in those moments feels like you've let someone down or like you've failed. But it also means that we never get to be seen for the person we are in that moment. And that diminishes how we feel about ourselves too. And even beyond that, we're not giving people the opportunity to see us and care for us. I mean, think about think about how you would feel if a friend said to you, oh, I didn't think you could handle me being stressed, so I lied to you when you asked how I was. I would hate that. We want to give to others so much, and we so often don't want to receive anything, support or love or being seen and known. So I I feel like the way to help with this imbalance is to start to take baby steps with sharing, especially if it doesn't come naturally. Just, Just one time. Try not making a joke to protect yourself and others when you share your feelings. I'll try it too. We can be uncomfortable together. Do you have something to say that the world needs to hear? Of course you do. If you want to turn your ideas into a podcast, Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn a little money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters. And here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer. So no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. I like it because it's easy to use and to get support when I need it. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. I've got one more for you, and I I, kind of touched on it earlier, but it's the fear of being seen. It could be a particular situation where you want to just blend in, but, and this is where it really starts to get into self-sabotage territory, fear of succeeding and getting attention for it. (laughs) This is one of my favorites because nearly everyone I suggest this to, including myself, immediately denies having any fear of success. It makes no sense to fear the thing you want, the thing that you're working toward. Except I think all of us, especially women, but maybe everyone, all of us are definitely afraid of being seen for our success sometimes or getting success. So we do sneaky little things to prevent it. We procrastinate working on a project. We don't put our best effort into something. We deflect all the credit to someone else thinking that makes us look humble. And we're certainly supposed to be humble. But why? Why? Why would we be afraid? I've got some projects going on in my life right now, some things I'm working on that are that are really scaring me. So I'm just going to take you through some of the the fear of being seen emotions that I've had and you see if any of them land for you. I was afraid of the work itself. Would it be too hard? What if it was too hard for me and I had to admit failure? Then I'd feel like a failure and like I'd let everyone down. So in order not to feel like that, I kept my projects a secret. I refused 
to let myself and the thing I was working on so hard be seen. And it put up weird walls between my family and me. They probably didn't notice, but I did because I, or maybe they did notice. I don't know. I'll have to ask. But I felt like I couldn't share with them. I was sparing them my eventual failure and sparing myself the agony of sharing a failure that I hadn't even had yet. And I might not have the failure. Who knows? But this is pretty standard for me, actually. I did that when I started this podcast, too. I, I told maybe three people for the first six months. Six months I was recording. It was a full year before I made any sort of public announcement and told my extended circle, which is ridiculous. Almost 100% of the people were so supportive when they found out. And they felt like they'd been cheated out a year of supporting me. It was a very silly move on my part. Very silly. But I was afraid to be seen. But back to now. I'm afraid of my new projects getting a ton of public attention. Because what if it's bad attention? What if I'm setting up expectations for myself that I'll never meet? If I'm not seen... I don't have to worry about any of that. Anyway, those are some of the thoughts that have run through my head as I've been doing this work. And it doesn't have to be a big project. It can be so many different things. Think about your own life right now and where you're hesitant to be seen. Is it hard to see them? Is it hard to see the places where you don't want to be seen? We are so good at hiding things from ourselves to avoid feeling uncomfortable or bad or scared. And while I've been talking about how this fear of being seen is a third eye chakra imbalance, my my own chakra work this week has led me to believe that it isn't just that, which is not surprising, I know, since none of this functions in a vacuum. But if I'm scared to be seen through my creative projects, that might also be a throat chakra imbalance. If we don't want people to see how we really feel, maybe we have a sacral chakra imbalance. The basic right there is the right to feel. And to me, it seems it seems like we might feel like we have the right to our emotions, but that we really shouldn't be putting them on other people. Very limited emotional rights. The rights to have your feelings as long as you keep a close eye on them because you wouldn't want them to be seen. And if we don't want our bodies to be seen or any part of us because of how we feel the world might react, perhaps that's a root chakra imbalance. We aren't living in our authenticity. We don't want to be seen for who we really are. So we take all of these hiding actions so we don't have to step into that. We don't have to own ourselves in any public way but we also never get to live in the full expression of who we are because to do that, we'd have to be seen. I mean, we don't have to be famous or anything. That's not what I mean by public way, but in our our daily interactions by the people we love. And we really, truly want to see the people we love as well. I don't have a lot of answers to these questions or this problem. Like I said at the beginning, I don't think we... We really ever talk about our right to be seen or our right to be known. And maybe that's because the answers aren't really very clear cut. It relies on our connections with others rather than just work on ourselves. So it's a a lot harder to control, right? I can't make someone see me the way I want to be seen. I, I can only be true to who I am and allow the world to interpret me as they see fit. But what we can do, I suppose, is allow for opportunities to be seen, to make our presence known, to show people vulnerability, knowing that their response is always about them and not about us. And also, we can be a safe place for other people to share their vulnerabilities and be open to success and recognition and attention and be honest with ourselves when we're avoiding it and why. To me, this work hits all of our chakras. And it's such a good example of what a dynamic system this is. I mean, just when we think we got it all figured out, a whole new space to explore opens. I hope this wasn't too weird today. Like I said, at least it was short. I mean, this is a bit of a, a new topic that I'm just figuring out myself. But I always like to share 
my work with you because I know I'm not the only person who experiences these things. And I would truly, truly love to hear your thoughts on being seen. Do you struggle with it? Is this a place where you shine? Let me know. Uh, you can send me a message on, on Facebook or Instagram. It's Your Chakra Coach, easy to find. Or just email me, sarah at yourchakracoach.com. I hope you have the most beautiful day. Go out, let yourself be seen. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.